So how are we doing? Still have lots of infantry equipment, which probably means I should be building some more infantry divisions. Do I want more marines? I don't know. At this point, we've got, what, 12 of them? Actually, I guess I may have only made the six. So let me go with an even 12. There we go. And then I'll add in a couple more lines of regular infantry as well. <laughs> want to build synthetic oil factories? Oh, I will! But right now, I want to finish my civilian factories so that we can build oil factories faster. Right? The more civilian factories you have, the faster everything else builds. Construction 2. There we go. 10% faster rate there. Um, so we can build a level 1 f uh, factories. We don't need to go to level 2 yet. Because that just means we can build two of them, as opposed to them working better or harder or anything like that. Uh, land Doctrines. Let's get it going. Grand Battle Plan. We don't have any of the 50% discount ideas, but that's okay. This will give us more max planning. And we'll probably keep one slot working on the Doctrine, on the Land Doctrine at least forever. Although, we really need the Naval and Air Doctrines as well. Alright, making that hard push over here. How are you doing with your XP here? Oop! Seasoned! And apparently you can keep going. I don't know what the highest level is. Maybe there's a level 5? These guys are now seasoned, or at least one of them are. One of them is. Concentrated Industry level 2. Excellent. So, Naval Doctrine-wise, they did start us off on Base Strike. And more importantly, I think on the right-hand side of Base Strike is where you get all the carrier stuff. Which is absolutely what I want. The first three are all carrier. Actually, carrier. Yeah. Which I want to start powering down. I have, oops, I have um, the latest carrier tech that's possible, right? We're good there? Yeah. I have to wait until 1940 to get the next one. So that's pretty tempting. I mean, we've got some equipment stuff I want to get to, but, you know, we're going to get started on the carrier primacy stuff. Because when we start the naval war, I want our carrier tech to be amazing. Alright, keep pushing, slowly but surely. Now, one nice thing, too, is with um, Republican or Nationalist Spain, they join either the fascist or whatever my faction is going to be called, and there's a war against the UK. Gibraltar will likely fall, which is really painful to the UK. Because in particular, like, the air base here, that gives great coverage on lots of land. <laughs> one of the uh, interesting decisions we'll have to make later on has to do with our ship designer. Because we've got all these different variants here that we can grab. Uh, this one here makes your ships really cheap, but they tend to be smaller. This one makes your screening elements, like your destroyers and things, considerably more effective, and you're really good at finding subs, which is pretty handy. Over here, the Pacific Fleet Designer makes your all your ships have longer range, as well as makes your characters have bigger decks, but less armor. Atlantic Fleet makes your carriers super armored, and your capital ships get quite a bit more armored and strong as well. They'll give you the 10% naval research discount time, which is really nice. Um, I also, is just me or does this particular little icon look like a Muppet to you? It looks kind of like a Muppet to me. Um, I think the Pacific Fleet Designer is the one we're going to go for, especially if we're focusing on sort of carrier-oriented stuff, because having carriers that are 25% bigger sounds pretty good. Also, if we take a look, if we grab, say, one of our fleets over here, and you can see, we actually can't quite reach the Hawaii Ridge right now. Now, we can increase our naval range if we increase the size of our naval bases. Oh, we have free civilian factories. So, not our dockyards, which is where you build ships, but rather our naval bases. It says it, um, it says it extends the range of your fleet, provides repair, allows overseas supply and export of resources. Higher levels increase the supply throughput. Maybe higher levels doesn't increase the range. And we already have naval bases over here, so I think we have to go for the 25% rage increase. Anyway, so we have free civilian factories for the first time. We have a whole one. <laughs> what year is it? I think I might want more civilian factories. I mean, there's lots of things we're going to want. Actually, we'll probably want more infrastructure up here. Um, we may want, like, a bigger air base up here, provide some amount of air cover. We, because where do we have some right now? We have closest air base would be here, which isn't going to be that great against the Eastern Front. So building a little bit of an air base here would be quite nice. Doing the refineries would be good. How We haven't checked our trade in a while. We need a little bit more oil, actually. So let's bring in another token of it from there. 
from Venezuela. That'll basically fix us. Yeah, that's still fine now. I don't think I'm going to start on the refineries quite yet. I'm tempted to build another round of civilian factories. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spread them out a little bit here. But I'm going to get another whack pile of these started. And that'll be the end of that run. And then we'll go to other things. But the more civilian factories you've got, the better everything becomes. As long as you stop building civilian factories in time. Right? You want to build as many civilian factories as possible until you absolutely have to switch over to full military production. Nuke Pearl Harbor. Now that would be interesting. Oh my god, not only does the Hindenburg survive, but Amelia Earhart completed her circumnavigation of the globe. Huh. Well, alright then. I wonder if we have, like, if we had another port, and there were technically a Spanish port there, um, that's owned by the Nationalists, as I could have done a naval invasion of Barcelona. But I don't have any ships over here, and I'd be very concerned that the Republicans might have ships and then just sink my marines. That would be kind of bad. Everybody lives! Interesting alternate uh, timeline. Yeah, we've got France in um, in their own faction, not the Allies. Having a little bit of an issue there. Someone keeps changing their mind about what's going on. Lots of reserves ready to jump in here. Okay, what is this? United Nations announces the Balkan Diplomatic Initiative. United Kingdom is not alone in seeing the threat rising in Central Europe. With their status as an independent nation guaranteed by the now challenged Treaty of Versailles, or with the fascist powers in their aggressive rhetoric claiming right to their territory, several states have seen the need to lead a pro-British policy. The United Kingdom has responded in this development by redoubling their diplomatic efforts in this region. Interesting. I haven't checked these. Um, Germany is going to treaty with the UK presumably towards the molotov ribbentrop Pact. France, capital ships, UK, Commonwealth ties, okay. That's fine. Just increasing things over there, not terribly relevant to what's going on. So, has this changed anything over here? Not yet. I suspect they've just gotten a diplomatic boost, maybe a pro-democratic boost. Alright, student movement. Yeah, the cheaper discount time, uh, research time is very nice. And we're going to grab the extra research slot now. Was it not UK? Was it the, U the USSR that was doing it? I thought it was the UK. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I love that. The anti common term pact immediately followed by the treaty with the USSR. Well, not immediately, but pretty close. Sell resources. I can't sell resources. People can buy resources from me. And in fact, we are. We are exporting 43 units of steel, 26 units of chromium, 2 units of aluminium, and 31 units of tungsten are all being exported. Um, but that's that's not something we can choose to do. And so that is giving us some more factories, which is good. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have the next level tank yet, right? No. Okay. So we'll have to upgrade that. Um, did I ever change my airplane production? I didn't. No. So I need to do that. Not that I ever boosted it up anyway. So. Do I want to start on the carrier fighters right away or the plane fighters? Like the regular fighters. I think we're going to start on the carriers. And we're only going to put like a couple of factories on that. And then I'm going to get another line of the regular fighters, not the carrier variant. Uh, oh, there we go. Anyway, let me put you at the bottom for now, so you're all grouped together. And you'll get, like, five factories once, once we get up there. Right now we're not building them, but that's okay. Alright. And they'll mostly go to upgrades right now. How we doing? There we go. Getting that push towards Barcelona. Mm -hmm. 
Light Wolf, cleaning your house? No, that's not fun. Watching Hoi 4, that's fun. So, Siam, how you doing there? So, because we could stage a fascist coup over here. I don't know if we need to do that. Again, maybe we don't actually have to get involved in Siam because... We do have both the pressure and befriend Siam options over here. Kind of like pressuring. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and cancel boost popularity. We've already invested a little. Might be handy later on. Um, they don't count as being fascist right now. They still count as being non-aligned with no elections. Uh, we could consider like reboosting popularity later on in staging coup. But for now we'll go and save up the um, political power again. I think that's probably okay. How much participation do I have in the Spanish War? Uh, well, none. I'm not actually part of the war. I've just sent volunteers, so I don't get credit for anything here. I just want them to win. Plus, it's giving us some experience and whatnot. We're going to have to consider if we want to make a change to our marine divisions over here. Like, we may want to stick to just 12 divisions, but we may want to make them beefier. Likewise, um, our regular infantry, we could go and add... Oh, we don't have any more companies. We could either make them have more infantry, which could give them some actual hard uh, artillery there, as opposed to just a support company. More importantly, perhaps, is we can use this army experience to buff our tank designs by throwing in a variant there. It's quite expensive to do, but they're a lot better. Well, we can't join the Allies. We're 100% fascist. So that won't work. So our only real options are if we join the Axis or if we create our own. And people were kind of pro-creating our own. Pro-creating? <laughs> but the thing is, with the Allies being split, with France being their own thing, I feel like the Axis are going to be a lot more powerful in this game than a lot of times, and it might be even more advantageous for us to jump in there. Conquer Mexico in there. there well, does Mexico have oil? Oh, they got 48 up here. Yeah, okay. The problem is Mexico, just like absolutely everything in the Americas, they all have their independence guaranteed. Like Venezuela would be even better. Obviously, we'd have to go through Panama, get the canal, take P Venezuela for tons of oil over here. But they're all guaranteed by the U.S. I think we grab more research here. It's We're on the cusp of 38, and 38 is when we get... Or, it's, yeah, when we get the next level of infantry stuff. So I kind of like the idea, I think, of getting the infantry equipment designer. I don't think we're going to go as motorized, because I think both with um, our amphibious assaults and also marching through pretty rough territory over here, I don't think we're going to focus as much as motorized. We're going to use like, boots on the ground kind of thing, leg infantry. So we're going to grab infantry equipment designer for a discount there. And we're not going to start on it yet, because it would still be a little too far ahead of time in September. Um, I don't know if we need a military police detachments or maintenance companies you know what i think i would like is i think i would like the next level of artillery getting ready including perhaps anti-air and anti-tank companies added to my divisions it starts to get the divisions a little heavy i think one of the things i'm going to have to do is differentiate between so i've got the garrison sort of infantry and i'm going to have perhaps like the hard the hardline infantry, which may have all the support companies, plus maybe a back row of artillery in here. Quite hard hitting. But then I might convert this group here. If I take out the tank, I might convert them into a middle ground between the two. You know, lots of infantry, but not necessarily all the support bits. I'll have to make a decision there. Yeah, you'll need, you'll need anti-air if you don't have air cover. And I'm not sure what the air situation is going to be like in, in the Soviet Union over here. Again, unless we build some airports at the front, we're not really going to have it. But they don't really have... They don't have their own airports here. At all. So unless they're building airstrips over here, we've sort of got that covered. Uh, are we seeing many tanks at the front? There's a good question. We got a little bit of motorized. I don't see any tank divisions. Now, it doesn't mean that some of these divisions don't have tanks in them. If we mouse over, we've got enough intel for a bit of a breakdown. Like, this one motorized company has somewhere between six to eight battalions of actual uh, motorized. There is a tank division over here. And another one over here. We started on the Doctrine. 
Start on the Naval Doctrine. Maybe we should start on the Air Doctrine. Because we're going to want some of this as well. I mean, Doctrines take a long time. A really long time to work our way through. There's nothing here. Oh, the Radar Tech. And if we're going to do Doctrine, I think we're going Strategic Destruction. Before this actually adds a lot of fighter detection, but also... Um, more naval mission efficiency, more air superiority, which is what we're going to want with our carriers. And in fact, over here, we've got more fighter agility. And that's what I'm really heavily looking for. Hard-hitting infantry for frontlining, quick-moving light infantry for spot reinforcements. Yeah, potentially. And I will want radar. I think at some point we're going to want some radar regardless, so I may as well take it because, you know, it can't possibly go wrong. We're going to want it at some point. Uh, Hendrix, hey! Thank you very much for the tip. Uh, hey from Ottawa, Ontario. Love watching your YouTube videos. You got me hooked on Civ 5. I didn't even know 4X and Grand Strategy games existed, and now they're my favorite type of games. Cheers! Well, that's awesome! That actually makes me really happy to hear. As well as the fact that we are finally attacking Barcelona itself, which should be the fall of Republic in Spain. I mean, they've got really very little left. Need to radar for ships. Do you? Oh, well then. Really? Okay, we got our extra research slot. Excellent. Where are we going to go after this? Um, I'll probably pick up the synthetic oil focus at this point, because at some point we're going to want to research the next level of that, and then we'll be ready. Or no, you know what? Perhaps the infrastructure. This is, so North and South Korea, right, over here, and then the other zones. Is it all the way up here? No, I don't know. Oops. I guess I can search for them, right? So what are they called? Like, where's... Jehol Leontong. Leontong is here. Jehol is here. Oh, okay. And East Hebe is over here. Okay. So it's infrastructure that goes along this sea here. Which is much more relevant if we're about to declare war against China, which we're not. Still wouldn't be bad to have more infrastructure in the re region, but I'm not sure that it's a rush. We could hurry up creating our faction. A lot of people aren't going to join factions while there's not a war going on there. Alternatively, this might be a great time for us to start going down army primacy or navy primacy, which will give us more dockyards or factories, not to mention giving us a discount for doctrines or models. But well, we don't need the next model ones until 1940, but the discount to doctrines would be quite nice. Increased naval production gives us more dockyards. Yeah, dockyard, dockyard, military factories, all really freaking nice. We don't need the fortress yet. Don't need the infrastructure yet. Advanced weapons, Imperial glory. There's your divine win. There's your kamikaze strikes, by the way. People keep asking about that. If we go this way, we can get towards the super heavy battleship tech and get discounts on that, which is awfully nice. Yeah, I think we want we want factories of some kind. And probably I'm going to start on the naval stuff. Potentially working my way up to super heavy battleships first. Yeah, I mean, obviously we'll need dockyards for the war against the USA, and the sooner we get them, the faster we can build stuff. It's also quite nice to have the dockyards now when we can import oil. Once the wars start, we're not going to be able to import as much oil. But oil, you don't need oil in Hoi 3, or Hoi 4. They've um, abstracted some of the supply things. You spend the oil to build the ships as opposed to spending them to maintain the ships. Basically, it's like we're, we're stockpiling oil ahead of time when we're building the ships um, to use for the ship production later on, the ship um, operation later on. So we could build the ships now while we have access to a lot of oil, and that might be really, really, really helpful. So I'm not going to start researching the heavy ship right now because we're going to get a discount on it soon. Yeah, let's get some... I'm, I'm going to go strategic destruction as well. So battlefield support gives you some fighter detection, lots of ground support boost. Air superiority efficiency is really nice. But this is mostly CAS support. Whereas over here, I like this, the fighter agility. Mm, it's all strategic bombing, which I don't know if is actually that relevant. What do we have on the right? Interception detection. Interception mission. Ground support. Fighter detection, air support, air support. I mean, I guess, in a way, wow, 20% fighter agility. 
and then the naval mission efficiency. I mean, kind of on all of them, we're sort of getting something. Huh. What stuff keeps your planes and ships alive because you can't compete in protection? I agree completely. Well, strategic bombing is not really something we're going to do, and this does eventually lead to strategic bombing. Tactical bombing is something, ground support and regular bombing, and tactical bombers can fit on carriers. I think this is probably a little bit more what we're doing. God, these are all, they're all really good. I think I'm going to go to operational integrity. I think I like it better for what we're doing here. Naval bombing is what you need, but that's naval mission efficiency right here. Was there another one? Naval strikes, so that's 15% versus 10%. But we're gonna get we're kinda gonna get a little bit of everything in all the trees. So this gets a little bit more fighter agility. So presumably our fighters will do better, you know, gaining, you know, fighting other things. People are completely split. I'm gonna go operational integrity. Done. <laughs> How's our stockpile of stuff? Infantry equipment keeps going up like crazy, so we really could dedicate ourselves to more infantry or more more marines. Okay, let's get more marines. One run of that. Spend that. Again, once the fighting starts, you do need a giant stockpile, but we are getting a crazy stockpile. Maybe, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring down the production. I don't like doing this because you've built up all the efficiency, and it sort of hurts to bring it down, but I'm going to go down to 10 factories here instead of 15. And that way, we'll actually get some of our planes building. You know what? For now, I'll do that. We get level 2... Is, is it 1938 we get the level 2 infantry tech? 39 is when we get the next level of weapons. Alright, still fighting for Barcelona. Oh, and free military factory, so I, I dumped too many of them. There we go. Just do something like that. Alright, good stuff. How's our supply? We do need more oil. And I'll keep pulling it in from Venezuela. Boom, like that. And we need more rubber. I'll grab it from the Netherlands. We don't quite need quite that many. I'll just I'll just grab one factory worth. That's gonna be okay. Just take those small ones in your China. They can make sure that they will not go against you later. Oh, oh, the other nations. Yeah, it might be time to do that. So Chinese front down here. Let's go ahead. World tension's quite low. I'm going to see if we can't take out the People's Republic of China. No, we're going to start with Shaanxi, because we'll actually get a better, uh, better front against them. They'll fall over very quickly. Delete order. Front line here. And the offensive front is actually mostly going to involve hitting the capital, but I think we'll have to go further than that. So I'll just paint something like this. Do you want to send any more troops over there? We can pull some people away from the Soviet front because actually right now we don't need them. So let me grab some of the more experienced ones over here and tell you you're going to move into that army instead. There you go. Chinese front has grown up a little bit more. Alright, let's mess around with things a bit. How's Spain? Barcelona still holding out. But we're attacking hard. Ah, there we go. Next level of light tank is done. We could research a variant, but I don't think I feel like doing that. We're on the cusp of 38, so I'm going to start the infantry uh, research. And I'm going to change my production lines here. These light tanks... Make sure we're building level 2 light tanks. Do we want to do a variant of it? We don't have a ton of experience, and they're quite expensive. Oh, they're not as expensive as I thought. 
Uh, not enough for literally all the things. I'll drop down the engine by one. Because I'm not sure we've really got a ton of mobility. Let's save that. So the Mark 1. Produce that there. And we'll give you potentially more factories later on. So right now we're still using the level 1 tanks, but the level 2 tanks are starting to be produced. And they will automatically be used for upgrades on our fronts over here. So once you get in position, I'll tell you to like, you know, pre-equip, but we'll wait a little bit longer before we declare. And we'll grab these guys first. Mm -hmm. You can customize your units. Yeah, you can do a few things. You can make variants for like your hard units like planes, tanks, boats, and you can customize your divisions as well for the ground. Alright, 